Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audience. Today, in this episode of Bitside Practice, we're going to be looking at some questions of the subject English, which was asked in Bitside 2018. So there are a lot of, so there are a total of 15 questions of English. Some of them have to do with words, others have to do with passages. So in this video, we're going to be looking at some of both types of questions in detail. So here lies our first question. Which of the following phrases 1, 2, and 3 given below each sentence should replace the phrase underlined to make the sentence grammatically correct? Choose the best option among the given alternatives that reflect the correct use of phrase in the context. If the sentence is correct as it is, you can mark D that is no correction required as the answer. So the statement here is, by working part-time and looking after his old mother, he managed to get the best for both worlds. The best for both worlds is not the correct option. The correct option will be one of the three given, or it can be the same sentence. So the best at both worlds, the best of both worlds, the best on both worlds. So which of the given options is correct? Is only one correct? Is only two correct? Is only three correct? Or are no corrections required? So um, in this question, it's vital that we look at the prepositions. So the first is best for both worlds. So working part-time and looking after his old mother, he managed to get the best for both worlds. So here for means for is the preposition that looks for the object. So that means it, it, the, his situation was best for his mother as well as the job. So while it was good for his mother, it might not be good for the job who might have wanted to work, work full time. So therefore he managed to get the best for both worlds is not correct. So we can eliminate option D, no correction required. So what about option three? So what about option C? only statement three is correct. So it says the best on both worlds. So the preposition on refers to something that is placed above something else. So like a table or a chair or a bed. So the best on both worlds would be also incorrect. So option C is incorrect. Now what about option A? Only, only statement one is correct. So statement one, the best at both worlds. So at refers to preposition of place. So at the mall, at, at his house, etc. So therefore, the best at both worlds is also incorrect. So therefore, option A is incorrect. The right answer is option B, only two is correct. The actual, you know, phrase, the cliche that we're looking for is the best of both worlds. So by working part-time and looking after his old mother, he managed to get the best of both worlds. So that means he was able to work and earn money and also look after his old mother. So he managed to gain both positives from both sides. So therefore, best of both worlds. So therefore, option B is the correct option for this question asked in 2018. Now, next question. Choose the word opposite in meaning to the given word impede. So opposite in meaning means we have to find the antonym of the word impede. So the word impede means to block or to restrict someone or something from happening. So therefore, option A block would be a synonym of the word impede, so option A is incorrect. Option D, freeze, can refer to freezing of water, so turning turning of water and turning water to solid at room temperatures, and also freeze can also refer to you know staying still due to any reason. So if you are afraid, you can say you are frozen with fear because you are staying still without doing anything because you are afraid. So option D again is incorrect because the, the definition here is not opposite in meaning to the word impede, which means to block or resist someone. 
Now, what about option B? Delay. So, delay means <clears throat> getting late. So, making something happen later than usual. So for example, you usually reach the office at 8, but then you reach today at 8.30, then you would say I got delayed by half an hour. So therefore, the word delay refers to any unprecedented, you know, lateness that the user, that the person experiences because of some unforeseen circumstances. So therefore, option B is incorrect. The correct option is option C, push. Push refers to the force that moves someone or something and it can also mean you know uh, <clears throat> inspire to go ahead so like if you are inspiring someone to to play uh, a certain game for example so you push the guy to move towards that game so the word push is the closest among the four options which to be opposite in meaning to the word impede that means to block or resist someone so you can impede someone from going from doing something bad and you can push someone to do something good so therefore the words push and impede are opposite in meaning so therefore option c is the correct option now Let's look at the final question of this episode. We have a big passage and we need to answer the questions given below it. The likelihood of at least 60,000 deaths being caused annually in India by fine particulate matter pollution in the air is cause for worry, even if the data released by the World Health Organization are only a modeled estimate. The conclusion that so many deaths can be attributed to particulate matter 2.5 micrometers or less in size is of, of course caveated since comprehensive measurement of PM 2.5 is not yet being done and the linkages between pollution, disease and deaths need further study. What is not in doubt is that one resident in many urban areas is that residents in many urban areas are forced to breathe unhealthy levels of particulates and the smallest of these, PM10, and less, can penetrate and get lodged deep in the lungs. The WHO, Global Burden of Disease Study, has been working to estimate pollution level health impacts such as stroke and ischemic heart disease, acute lower respiratory infection, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Data on fine particulates in India show that in several locations, the pollutants come from burning of biomasses such as coal, fuel wood, farm litter, and cow dung cakes. In highly built up areas, construction debris, road dust, and vehicular exhaust add to the problem. The Prime Minister launched an air quality index last year aimed at improving pollution control. The new data, which the WHO says provide the best evidence available on the terrible toll taken by particulates should lead to intensified action. A neglected aspect of urban air pollution control is the vital discarding of the construction and demolition three waste management rules notified to substantially manage debris that is dumped in the cities, creating severe particulate pollution. The Environment Ministry has highlighted the role that debris can play as a resource. Municipal and government contracts are, under the rules, required to utilize up to 20% of materials made from construction and demolition waste, and local authorities must place containers to hold debris. This is done to the cities, creating severe particulate pollution. Measures must be implemented without delay, providing cleaner fuels and scientifically designed cookstuffs to those who have no option but to burn biomasses would have a big impact on reducing particulate matter in the northern and eastern states, which are the worst hit during winter, when biomass is also used for heating. Greening the cities could be made a mission 
involving civil society with a focus on landscaping open spaces and paving all public areas to reduce dust. Greening the cities could be made a mission. These measures can result in lower PM10 and PM2.5 levels. Measurement of these particles is currently absent in many cities, a lacuna that needs to be addressed. So now you have heard the passage. The question here is which of the following is or are not true in the context of the passage? So we have four statements here. Eastern and Southern states are worst hit in the winter by burning of biomasses. The smallest particulate matter, PM2.5, penetrates and gets lodged in the lungs. Data on fine particulates in India show that in several locations, the pollutants come from smoke emitted by vehicles. None of this is true. Which of the following is correct? So, which of the following options is correct? Now, let's look at the first statement. Eastern and Southern states are worst hit in winter by burning of biomasses. So it says Eastern and Southern states. Let's look at the passage. So the passage here is, uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah. So providing cleaner fuels and scientifically designed cookstuffs to those who have no option but to burn biomass would have a big impact on reducing particulate matter in the Northern and Eastern states which are the worst hit during winter, when biomass is also used for heating. So as you can see in the passage, it is northern and eastern states, while here in option A, it says eastern and southern states, so option A is definitely incorrect. So what about option B? The smallest particulate matter, PM2.5, penetrates and gets lodged in the lungs. Now let's look at the passage. So, so as you can see in this sentence, what is not in doubt is that one is that residents in many urban areas are forced to breathe unhealthy levels of particulates and the smallest of these, PM10 and less, can penetrate and get lodged deep in the lungs. So the smallest of the particles, the particulate matter, is referred to as PM10 in the measurement. But over here in the question, it's given PM 2.5. So option B is incorrect. And if you also see in the passage above, in the sentence above, it says, the conclusion that so many deaths could be attributed to particulate matter 2.5 micrometers or less is of course caveated, which means it's not true because comprehensive measurement of 2.5 is not yet being done. So option B is incorrect. So we have C and D. Which of these is correct? Data on fine particulates in India show that in several locations the pollutants come from smoke emitted by vehicles. So we need to prove whether the statement is correct or not. So let's go back to the passage. So in this passage um, it says the whole data on fine particulates in India show that several so that in several locations the pollutants come from burning of biomass, such as coal, fuel, wood, farm litter, cow dung cakes, etc. In highly built up areas, the vehicular exhaust comes into the picture, but in several locations, in this statement, the correct answer would be burning of biomass. So therefore, when it, in this statement, it says smoke emitted by vehicles, so option C is incorrect. So as you can see, the first three statements are incorrect, and so you can safely click option D None of these is true. So that concludes this episode of BitSat Practice. We hope you found this episode useful. For more of our videos regarding BitSat, you can always hit the link in the description down below. To learn more about our channel, you can always subscribe to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios. So until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.